Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our online worship service. We're glad that you're able to join us this afternoon. Masaya po kami kasama kayo magworship sa araw na to. And we want to welcome those of you who came today for the very first time, tuning in with us today for the very first time. We are Victory. Our heart is to honor God and make disciples. Please, if hindi pa po kayo part ng Victory Group, we would love to get, help you get connected to a community para kahit po nasa, sa, nasa sari, sariling bahay po tayo ngayong pandemic, we'd still get to pray together with one another. So if you're joining us for the very first time, please do send us a message here on Facebook or 
scan this QR code and we would love to pray for you and get connected with you as well. Kung kayo naman po ay isa sa mga kasama na namin every week mag-worship, masaya po kami and excited kami to worship with you again this afternoon. So let's begin with a word of prayer. Lord, we welcome you in our time of fellowship, worship, prayer, and the word this afternoon. Itinataas namin ang iyong pangalan. Salamat sa pagmamahal mong Walang katulad at walang kapantay. Pinupuri ka namin sa iyo ang mataas na papuri at pasasalamat sa lugar na to. Sa ngala ni Jesus. Amen. Purihin po natin ang Panginoon. Kilala mo mga bituin, mga likha. Sa daigdig, sa simula, hanggang wakas Ikaw ang sandigan, hinugis na iyong kamay Larawan mo sa aking buhay Tanda na iyong pamamahal Kaya't sabihin mo, ipaalala mo Ipaunawa ang iyong puso Kaya't sabihin mo Ang kalooban mo Ang makilala ka Ang nais ko Ako'y sa'yo O Panginoon At ang nais ko Ang kalooban mo Ang pag-ibig mo Kaya't ang nais ko'y Ang kaluban mo Hinugis ng iyong kamay Larawan mo sa aking buhay Tanda na ang iyong pagmamahal Kaya't sabihin mo Ipaalala mo, ipaunawa ang iyong puso Kaya't sabihin mo, ang kalooban mo Ang makilala ka, ang nais ko Ako'y sa'yo, o Panginoon At ang nais ko Kahit sa landas ay ihahayag sa buong mundo ang pag-ibig mo. Kahit sa landas ay ihahayag sa buong mundo. Ang nais ko 
your word that lives inside me reminds me you are here my hope you restore your promise is sure and I am convinced that you are faithful all things are possible in your name all things are possible in your name the stars they hold your promise you guide me Your promise is sure, and I am convinced that you are faithful. All things are possible in your name. All things are possible. that is our prayer and declaration this afternoon as we worship you as we lift up your name that all things are possible in the name of Jesus Christ do you believe that church that all things are possible in the name of Jesus so this afternoon we're gonna do something why don't you think about the most seeming impossible situations that you are personally facing right now probably in your school in your work, in your family, in your relationship, in your finances. Why don't you think about that seemingly impossible situation and we're going to surrender all of that to God together this afternoon. Would you join me and agree with me in prayer? Lord, this afternoon, 
as that worship song declares, Lord, that is the same declaration of our heart. Lord, we surrender to you these seemingly impossible situations that we are facing, personally, as a family. Lord, we declare provision is possible in your name. Healing is possible in your name. Restoration is possible in your name. Comfort and peace is possible in your name. Breakthrough is possible in your name. So Lord, we say, let your will be done. Let your kingdom come in our lives. And Lord, we declare all of these prayer requests that you will surpass them and answer them far more than what we can ask or imagine. This we pray in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. And everybody say a big, big. Amen. Amen. Could you give God praise wherever you are? Thank you, God. All right, so this afternoon as we pray, as we continue to pray in the name of Jesus, we're going to continue and lift up our prayer points. Would you grab someone in your home or probably if you're alone watching, tuning in today, would you agree with us in prayer as we flash our prayer points for our nation and the nations of the world? We together in prayer, Lord, as one people, we say, we, we come in faith together and we ask for restoration. Whatever this pandemic, whatever the enemy has stolen from us in this season of pandemic, we declare that you are a God who is able to restore. We speak a double portion of return. We speak more of you in our lives this season of pandemic lord we also agree in pay, in prayer for the complete eradication of covid 19 in the face of the earth we speak lord accessible affordable available uh, vaccines in the soonest possible time lord we pray for we pray all of these for our nation and all the nations of the world more than our prayer request lord we pray that we would get to know you more in our nation and across the world. May this pandemic bring us closer to you every single day. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. And as we continue to believe God for what He's doing in our nation and the nations of the world, we want to give you a special missions update on what God is doing in His work in Kaohsiung, Taiwan. God is doing amazing things in our midst despite everything that's happening around us. So for more of that, let's watch this video. I'm Jason Yu. I'm a Filipino-Taiwanese. I'm one of your missionaries here in Taiwan. I've been serving here in Taiwan for almost seven years. We were actually excited when we entered 2020 because um, we just got our new center. 
that it's just a few blocks away from KMU or from the main campus that we are actually reaching out. Then all of a sudden, the pandemic hit. All of our campus ministry were actually uh, were disrupted. Government imposed some restrictions, so campuses were closed for outsiders. So we cannot enter the campuses that we are reaching out. At first, our team was somehow disoriented because of that. We just um, stepped out in faith, but of course with wisdom. Our team decided to continue on our outreach loop every Friday. Like we prepared some engaged activities, used some uh, materials we also shared to them. Our heart for the students here in Taiwan is, to, is for them to really encounter God and have a personal relationship with Jesus. So I got to know Jim when we were still starting in our campus ministry work here in Kaohsiung. At first, Jim was actually um, very cautious in terms of building relationship with, um, with us. Jim actually told me that at first I thought that you will just talk to me about nonsense. But as time goes by, I realized that you are a person who actually cares for the next generation. Um, it actually highlights God's process in terms of changing the lives of people. Sometimes it's, um, it's very fast, sometimes it's slow, sometimes it's evident. And sometimes it seems that God is not doing something. But as we continue to be faithful and be patient, we will be able to see people's life, uh, lives change by God. So on behalf of our family and on our team here in Kevin Nation Kaohsiung, we'd like to say thank you for continually um, supporting and praying with us. We hope and pray that um, you will be able to read 30, 60, and 100 a uh, hundred folds of what you have sown in the kingdom of God. God bless you all. God is certainly moving and His church continues to grow no matter the circumstances. In spite of closed campuses and government restrictions, the church in Kaohsiung is finding new ways to reach out to students and seeing lives change for God's glory. Thank you for your fervent support and prayer. We are excited to see God continue to move for His glory in every nation. Wow! Can we give God praise for that update? Even if we are in quarantine or lockdown, we believe that the gospel and the work of God can never be quarantined. Amen? So thank you for those of you who are continuously praying and giving to world missions. So we have a unique opportunity before us. If you would like to continue partnering specifically with our world missionaries, please go to this link um, for your specific partnership with a specific world missionary. Please go ahead and go to this link or scan this QR code. QR code. Or should you want to give to Every Nation World Missions directly, please go to everynation.org.ph slash give. Again, that link is for a specific world missionary or to give directly to Every Nation World Missions. And know that your giving is bringing the gospel to so many who don't know Jesus yet. Let me encourage all of us this afternoon for our time of giving as we worship God through our finances. Matthew 25 verse 40 says this, And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these my brothers, you did it to me. I love how in scripture Jesus encourages us that our giving to the needy and our giving is ultimately unto him. Let that be our posture as we give today and worship God in our finances. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for reminding us this afternoon that ultimately our giving is worship unto you ultimately. Lord, we say as we give our tithes, as we give our offering, as we give to those in need, we say we love you, we worship you, and our giving is unto you. Be blessed, be worshipped, be honored by our giving. And Lord, thank you that your heart is to bless your people far more than what we can ask or imagine. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you smile as you give? By the way, as we give, uh, we want to let you know that giving has been made easy through GCash, credit card, debit card. So for more details on online giving, please visit our website on victory.org.ph give. Again, that's victory.org.ph give. And 
in that site, you get more instructions to assist you in online giving. However, should you need further support, we would love to help you be able to give unto the Lord. So please do contact these mobile numbers and give us a message here on Facebook should you need further assistance for your online giving. We really encourage you to give your giving online because your safety and health is our priority. However, since kung miss na miss nyo na po talaga ang Metro East at gusto nyo pong ibigay ang inyong tithes and offering in person dito sa center, welcome na welcome po kayo to drop your tithes and offering and your giving in our Kids Church Lobby every Saturday and Sunday, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Pero ang request po namin, again, because your health and safety is our priority, please do observe safety protocols, wear your face mask, face shield, and observe social distancing. So wala po munang usap ng malapitan, kaway-kaway po muna. Uh, if ever you'd go here. So again, however you want to give, whether it's online or in person here every Saturday and Sunday, we believe that God sees your faith and sees your heart and He will honor your faith to give. We pray that you will be blessed as you give unto the Lord. So before we go on to the preaching of the word, we would like to give you a special announcement. Ready na po ba kayo? Say this with me. November 15. Okay, November 15, starting November 15, we will have a new time slot for our worship service. So, para po ito, lalo na sa mga taong mahilig mag-worship service, pahapon, paggabi, dahil marami kayong ginagawa sa umaga and you're attending to your family in the morning, we're gonna have a new time slot for our online worship service. Our new time slot starting November 15 will be 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. So, sa mga makakamis po ng 3 p.m. service, again, we would like to direct you, it's gonna be 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. for our new online worship service time slot. And this will help us po in preparation as we soon resume our on-site worship service. So, malapit na malapit na po yan. Be excited, but for now, for our online time slot, it's going to be 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. So stay tuned. We'll, we'll give you more instructions for our on-site services as we resume soon. Okay? So at this point po, be excited. Prepare your hearts. Prepare your notebooks. Prepare your Bible as we hear and encounter God through the preaching of the Word. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us on our online Sunday service. We're really happy that you are joining us now kahit November 1. And our prayer is that as you join us today, that you would have a mighty encounter with God. Okay? So again, if this is your first time joining us, we are Victory. We are a church and we are here to honor God and make disciples. And we would like to invite you to join us every fourth Sunday of the month for communion. Okay? Kung sanay po kayo na uh, every week kayo nagko-communion or probably once in a while, Join us every fourth week or fourth Sunday of the month. We're going to have communion together on our online Sunday service, okay? So now, let's talk about the Word of God. We're actually in the middle of our series entitled, The Gospel Expressed. And we are saying that, yes, the gospel has to be understood, but at the same time, it has to be expressed. It has to become part of our lives. Gusto po natin na makita to sa ating pamumuhay, sa ating araw-araw na buhay. That's why we are going to talk about this and we're continuing it in our series. And actually, pinag-usapan po natin yung uh, Book of Romans. And for the past uh, many weeks, okay, so pinag-usapan natin to. We're actually on our second to the last preaching from the Book of Romans. So to start our preaching, let me say this statement. We would always encounter people who has a different take or opinion on things compared to us. We would always encounter people who has a different take or opinion on things compared to us. That's the truth of the matter. In fact, kami po nung asawa ko, nung bagong kasal pa lang kami, we have a different take when it comes to the idea of rest day. For her, pag sinabing rest day, ito yung araw na dapat ginagawa mo yung mga chores or gawaing bahay. For me naman po, pag sinabi mong rest day, it's a day to rest, to relax, to do nothing. So obviously, nung bago kami mag-asawa, medyo meron kami mga passionate discussions kung ano ba yung gagawin namin sa rest day namin. Buti na lang, we love each other, so we were able to resolve it. But clearly, we have different takes regarding certain matters. And that is true for us as well. Maybe for some of us, we have different takes when it comes to, to saan ba dapat uh, pinipisel, yung toothpaste pag gagamitin natin, sa gitna ba, 
ng tube or dun sa end ng tube. Okay? Iba naman, uh, iba't iba yung take natin when it comes to Lebron being referred to as a goat. Okay? Greatest of all time. Some people say yes, some people say no. Okay? Yung iba, uh, iba yung take natin when it comes to the right partner that a single person should look for. Sabi nung iba, dapat daw yung mahal ka. Sabi naman ng iba, yung dapat yung mahal mo. So, magkakaiba tayo ng take. Uh, probably also in our services, ngayong pandemic season, alin ba dapat yung services na ina-attenda natin para ma-honor natin si God? Yung online services o yung on-site services? We have different opinions or takes in certain things. And because that is the case, we would always encounter people who has a different take or opinion on things compared to us. Now, this is very important because we would encounter them not just in our homes or offices or classes, we would encounter them also in our church. And in the church that we are going to talk about, the church in Rome, they actually have varied opinions on certain matters as well. Sadly, these differences in their opinions cause them to have a division. That's why Paul had to write to them addressing this concern and correcting them, exhorting them so that they would be put back to the right way or to be aligned back to the will of God. So, importante po na mapag-usapan natin at matuto tayo sa lesson na to. Why? Because what happened to them can actually happen to us if we would not learn from their mistakes. What happened to them can happen to us if we would not learn from their mistakes. So now, let's talk about the scripture na focus natin ngayon. We're going to talk about Romans chapter 14, verse 1, up to Romans 15, verse 7. As you would notice, medyo mahaba po to, kaya ang babasahin lang muna natin ay Romans chapter 14, verse 1, and then Romans 15, verse 7. Okay, yung uh, book ends, nung covered na scripture natin. So, can you bring out your Bibles with you? We're gonna read it together. Romans chapter 14, verse 1, and then Chapter 15, verse 7. Let me read it for you. It says here, As for the one who is weak in faith, welcome him, but not to quarrel over opinions. Therefore, welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this opportunity to learn from your scripture and to learn from the example of the church in Rome I pray, God, that in the same way that they were aligned to your will, may you align us as well to your will. This we claim in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The common word that we would see in the scriptures that we read is the word welcome. Welcome. We usually use it, but ano ba yung ibig sabihin nun? Nung ginamit to ni Paul. When he used the word welcome, he actually meant that we are to receive or make room for someone in our lives. So when he said, make room for those who are weak in faith, he say, he saying na, tanggapin mo siya, isama mo siya sa buhay mo, gawin mo siyang parte ng buhay mo. And this was the encouragement that Paul has for the church in Rome because that's exactly the action that they are having a hard time doing. Why? Because sabi ko nga po, they were divided. They have different opinions. And to be more specific, yung concern nila, yung debate nila, has something to do with their diet and Sabbath. Okay, diet and Sabbath po yung pinagtatalunan nila. And now, we want to learn from their mistake. That's why, for this preaching, I want to share to you four reminders so that we would be able to stay united as a church even if there are differences uh, between us when it comes to our opinions on certain matters. Okay? Four reminders so that we will stay united as a church. And para po madali nating matandaan, tandaan lang po natin yung acronym na DIET. D-I-E-T. DIET. So sabihin mo nga sa katabi mo, sa kasama mong nanonood ngayon, huwag kalimutan ng DIET. Ayan, huwag natin kalimutan ang DIET. DIET, letter D. D stands for different. In the previous uh, chapters, uh, before sa topic po natin ngayon, before chapter 14, Paul actually made it clear that we are meant to be the same on important things. That we are meant to be the same in certain things that are to be expressed because we understood the gospel. He said that because we understood the gospel, we are meant to be the same 
that we are all supposed to worship our God with everything that we have. He also said that we are meant to be the same when it comes to loving others, even our enemies. We are to bless them even. He also said that we are also to submit ourselves to the human authority that God has placed upon our lives. We are meant to be the same in doing that. He also said that we are meant to be the same when it comes to staying away or abhorring sexual immorality, jealousy, and drunkenness. We are meant to be the same. But here, we would see in chapter 14 and chapter 15 that Paul was also painting a picture that there are concerns, there are uh, issues or areas in our Christian walk that it's okay for us to be different. Okay lang po na magkakaiba tayo. Okay, and that's exactly what he uh, presented in chapter 14 verses 1 to 6. Let me read that to you. As for the one who is weak in faith, welcome him, but not to quarrel over opinions. One person believes he may eat anything, while the weak person eats only vegetables. Let not the one who eats despise the one who abstains, and let not the one who abstains pass judgment on the one who eats. For God has welcomed him. Who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? It is before his own master that he stands or falls, and he will be upheld. For the Lord is able to make him stand. One person esteems one day as better than another, while another esteems all days alike. Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. The one who observes the day observes it in honor of the Lord. The one who eats and eats it in honor of the Lord, since he gives thanks to God, while the one who abstains abstains in honor of the Lord and gives thanks to God. Clearly, Paul was presenting here that we are different. We are different. And the people in Rome came from different backgrounds. Yung iba sa kanila, Gentiles. Yung iba sa kanila, Jews yung background. We have different backgrounds. And the same with our church. Yung church po natin sa Metro East, iba't iba tayo ng background. We may say that we're all Christians, but we are probably coming from different uh, Christian background as well. Yung iba sa atin, galing sa Baptist Church, or Methodist, or Protestant. Iba sa atin, Catholic before. Iba't iba tayo. We may be believing on the same Jesus, the salvation that He has granted us, the Holy Spirit that is upon us, but Nonetheless, we have different backgrounds. Okay? We would also see in the presentation of Paul that they have different levels of understanding of the gospel. Uh, take note that in verse 1 and verse 2, he made mention of those who are weak in faith, those who are eating vegetables. So, ibig sabihin po ba no, na kapag vegetarian ka, uh, mahina na yung faith mo? Di ba? Kawawa naman yung mga vegetarian na kasama natin sa church, di ba? Hindi po yun yung literal meaning nun. We have to understand the context because when he said those who eat vegetables are weak in faith, he's actually referring to those people who, yes, believes in Jesus as uh, the way for salvation. He believes that uh, they were cleansed through Jesus. But at the same time, they are still adhering strictly okay, to the dietary laws of Moses. Because in, in the Old Testament, when, when Moses gave those dietary laws, it was simply put there so that people would comply to it so that they could come to the presence of God. It was said there that there are certain food, okay, especially mga meat. They are not allowed to eat that because those are being offered to idols, making it unclean. So pag kinain mo yon, unclean ka na rin, hindi ka na worthy lumapit sa presence ni God. So it's there, and these people, apparently, those that nire-refer ni, ni Paul as weak in faith, are still practicing now, bakit sinabing weak in faith? It simply means that their understanding of the gospel is not yet in full realization. Hindi pa nila fully naintindihan. Why? Kasi it's also said in Mark 7 and in the book of Acts, and even in this text in, in verse 14, that Jesus already cleansed us. That there's nothing outside our body that could make us clean. And in Christ, if we are in Christ, if we are have Jesus in our lives, He has already made us clean. So, ibig sabihin, it supersedes whatever law or practices that they used to have. Now, Paul was just say, simply saying here, this is the reality, na magkakaiba pa tayo ng level of understanding of the gospel. Not to say na ang sama naman ng mga weak in faith or those who are still vegetarian, but he's just saying na eh, ganun talaga eh. 
iba't iba tayo ng level of uh, understanding of the gospel. Iba sa atin, bago pa, iba sa atin, hindi pa naiintindihan, hindi pa nare-reveal sa atin. And ganun din naman, di ba, sa panahon natin ngayon, there are people who are part of our church who are still new, pero hindi pa ganun ka-deep, hindi pa ganun ka-mature yung understanding nila of their relationship with God. All they know is that Jesus saved them, that they have surrendered their lives to God. Pero yung expression nun, yung manifestation nun, iba't iba pa. Why? Kasi iba't iba pa nga yung level of understanding of the gospel that we have. It's being presented by Paul in those passages. He is also saying here that because of those understanding, because of those background, people also have different convictions in honoring God. Okay, in verse 6, says there, the one who observes the day observes it in honor of the Lord. The one who eats, eats in the honor of the Lord since he gives thanks to God while the one who abstains, abstains in honor of the Lord and give thanks, gives thanks to God. Okay? God speaks to us personally. And a lot of times, He would lead us to different convictions or different expressions of honoring Him. To, to give an example, two different people could attend the same preaching about work, honoring God with their work, and come out of that preaching having different convictions. One may may hear from God a conviction that they are supposed to spend less time with their work and spend it with their family. But another person could come out of that preaching, applying it, having the conviction na kailangan niyang magkaroon ng more time for work because he is not being a good steward of his work. Obviously, same revelation, same, same God, same word, different conviction. This is the picture that Paul was presenting here. He was simply saying, we have to accept, we have to realize that in a church, in our church, we are different. But this is very crucial for us to understand. Kasi pag parte ka ng church, we would always encounter people in church who has a different take or opinion on things compared to us. For the church in Rome, it was their, their opinion about diet and Sabbath. And it caused them division. We cannot afford to let it happen to us. Maybe in our church, maybe in your church, the people that you would encounter have different takes when it comes to the kind of music there that we are supposed to listen to. Yung iba gusto hymnas, yung iba gusto medyo, medyo, uh, medyo rock, medyo may electric guitar, may drums. Different takes. Iba, different opinions when it comes to the hairstyle and the get up when you are attending a service. Dapat ba yung buhok naka-braid, bawal nakalugay, bawal ba sleeveless, o okay lang yung naka-sleeveless? What should be the standard? We have different opinions, different takes. Views on social drinking. Is it okay for a Christian to drink socially? Okay, hindi natin pinag-uusapan yung drunkenness because malinaw yun sa Bible. That's a sin. Social drinking. Sip lang. Isang, ano lang, isang lagok lang. Is it okay? Is it not? We have different opinions on that. Political views, beliefs about the Holy Spirit, beliefs about our free will, iba't iba tayo. Okay? And when we do encounter those people, the question is, how will we respond? Will we respond just like those in the Roman church? They, uh, they basically judge them, they argued with them, or will we follow the way that Paul is telling us, the way that God is telling us? And and here, he's exhorting us, do not quarrel over opinions. Do not pass judgment. But the question is, why? Why is Paul so strong in pushing for these actions, for these applications? Why? Because of I. Diba? The different I stands for in Christ. Paul is saying to the church in Rome, being in Christ is your identity. And God is saying to us right now, being in Christ is your identity. And if that is your identity, it implies that we live and die to honor God. We live and die to honor God. Verse 7 says, For none of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this, for, for to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both to the dead and to the living. We are to live and die for the Lord. That's the whole purpose of our being. And it also says in Scripture that, that if you are in Christ, we believe that God is our ultimate judge. Ibig sabihin, we are meant to leave the judging up to Him. 
na siya yung magjudge sa atin, siya yung magjudge sa mga tao sa paligid natin regarding their opinions, regarding their beliefs. This, the scripture in, in chapter 14 also tells us that we are about God's kingdom and His kingdom has always been about righteousness, peace, joy from the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Spirit. Verse 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. This is what we are supposed to be about. Ibig sabihin, we are meant to be advocates of these things. So, having considered that we are in Christ, Paul is saying, that's why, yes, we are different, but we are in Christ. We are different, but we are in Christ. Therefore, do not quarrel over opinions. <clears throat> Why? Because it does not honor God. Do not pass judgment because you are not the ultimate judge. God is the ultimate judge. Leave the judging to Him. And you yourselves would be judged. So, kumbaga ipaubaya mo yun kay God. Do not despise. Why? Because despising other people does not propagate peace, joy, or even righteousness. And lastly, he even said in the scripture, in the text that we have, that we are not to cause another to stumble. Our actions, whether to do something or not to do something, is not meant to cause another to stumble. For example, uh, when you are in, in the case of the Roman church, he was basically saying, pag kinain mo ba yan, does it cause someone to stumble? Or does it push other people away from the church? Or does it break the work? Or sinisira ba nito yung work ni God sa buhay niya? Sometimes it's the conflict in the church or within the relationships within the church that destroys the work of God in their lives. They stumbled. Nawawala sila sa church. And even in our time today, gano'n na ba karami yung mga tao na nawala sa church? Simply because they encountered someone who is so strong in their opinion na about certain convictions. Again, we're not talking about sin here. We're not talking about what the Bible had made clear na ito, dapat ginagawa mo kay ganito, ito pag ginawa mo to kasalanan to. We're talking about convictions, applications, expressions of what God has commanded us in Scripture. Sometimes we are so strong in pushing for our own conviction na dapat ganito ka rin. That people tends to have conflict and some people, out of frustration, out of heartbreak, they would distance themselves from the church, from us, and even leave the church. Paul was saying, we are not supposed to be a stumbling block for other people. Some people naman, yung because of our bad, para sa kanila, bad example tayo. He was saying here, if eating a certain food would cause other people to stumble, wag mo nalang kainin. Because your conviction is between you and God. God knows that you want to honor Him. God knows that this is your desire. But if eating that would make that person uh, go away from God, then wag na lang. It's a conscious decision to surrender one's freedom. Yun yung sinasabi ni Paul when he exhorted people not to uh, be a stumbling block to another. Instead of doing these things, he's saying, this is what you're supposed to do. Letter E, edify or build up. Edify or build up. Romans 14 verse 19 in ESV says, So then, let us put or let us pursue what makes for peace for mutual upbuilding. In NIV, it says, Let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. So, we, yes, we're supposed to edify or build up uh, the people around us, but how would we know if we're actually doing it? Let me give you three, uh, three checks uh, for us to know. Una, is it done out of love? Romans 14 verse 15 says, For if your brother is grieved by what you eat, you are no longer walking in love. We are supposed to walk in love. We're supposed to do things out of love. Okay? Let me, so, tanong natin sarili natin. Pag ginawa ko ba to, am I doing it out of love for that person? Let me differentiate to you tolerance, avoidance, and love. Pag sinabi mong tolerance, Ganito yan sa picture. Kanina sinabi ko na magkaiba kami ng take ng asawa ko when it comes to rest day. Siya, gusto niya rest day, nag-chores. Ako rest day, nagpapahinga lang, walang ginagawa. Tolerance looks like this. Walang pakialamanan. Uh, che, 
Kung gusto mong mag-chores on a rest day, mag-chores ka. Basta ako magpapahinga ako. Hindi ko tapipigilan. Huwag mo rin akong pigilan. Tolerance. Ganun din sila. Bisan, kung ano paniniwala mo, bahala ka sa paniniwala mo. Basta yung paniniwala ko, ito yung paniniwala ko. Avoidance ganito. Sige na nga, Che. Maghuhugas na ako ng pinggan. Magtatapon ako ng basura. Gagawin ko lahat yung chores na yan. Huwag lang tayong mag-aaway. Pero alam mo lang sa loob mo, napupuno ka. But the problem with that is, dadating ka sa tipping point, punong-puno ka na, maiinis ka na, lagi na lang ikaw ang nasusunod. Kasi for the longest time, you're just avoiding the conflict. This is love. Love is saying, sige, gawin ko. Let me try na minsan, maghuhugas ako ng pinggan on a rest day, maglilinis tayo ng bayo, yun lang yung gagawin natin. And minsan, ikaw din, try mo din, rest din tayo maghapon. And in doing so, we're doing it because we want to understand each other. We're doing it because we want to give each other a chance to influence each other. And true enough, nung ginawa namin yun, nakita niya yung merit na rest day, dapat pala nagre-rest din tayo sa rest day. At ako rin, nakita ko rin yung merit na dapat pala nilalagyan din namin ng chores yung rest day. Why? Because it was done out of love. It is with consideration. Bible is saying that's how you are supposed to build up. The actions that you do, whether to do it or not to do it, has to be out of love. Also, it leads to peace. You ask yourself, kapag ginawa ko ba to, ano yung ending? Away ba? Conflict ba? Oh, peace. Because it's meant to lead to peace. And also, it's meant to be done by faith. Romans 14.23 says, But whoever has doubts is condemned if he eats because he is because the eating is not from faith. For whatever does not proceed from faith is sin. Simply put, it's saying na kapag ginawa mo, by faith mo gawin, ibig sabihin, it's meant to please God. So we ask ourselves, kapag ginawa ko ba to, is it gonna please God? Is God going to be honored in doing this? Because if He is, then let me do it. Okay? Simply put, Paul is exhorting us na yes, we are different, but are in Christ. Thus, we are to edify each other. Thus, we edify each other. And lastly, okay, so alam ko medyo humahaba tayo, pero ang pangit naman pag tinapos natin yung acronym natin, di ay ilang, dai. So kahit medyo mahaba, idugtong na po natin yung last word natin, T, okay, diet, which means together. Romans 15, Verses 5 to 6 in New Living Translation says, May God who gives this patience and encouragement help you live in complete harmony with each other as fitting for followers of Christ Jesus. Then all of you can join together with one voice, giving praise and glory to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. This scripture is telling us that God meant us to be together. It is His plan all along. It is His design for you and for me. When God called us to follow Him, we are meant to follow Him together with other people who are different compared to us. And ano ba yung pinapagawa sa atin ni God? We are meant to worship Him together. We are meant to honor God together. In fact, pag tinignan po natin yung ending ng story, ending ng plan ni God sa atin, it's exactly the picture of being together. In the book of Revelation, chapter 7, verses 9 to 10 says here, After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages. Such a picture of people who are different. But guess what? They're doing the same thing because they are in Christ. Standing before the throne and the Lord and standing, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, worshiping, honoring God, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Therefore, what Paul is trying to say to us, what God is trying to, to impart to us is this, that yes, we are different, but are in Christ. Thus, we edify each other as a church called to be together. As a church called to be together. As I close, Paul reminded the church in Rome why we can 
welcome those who are different to us and how or what should be the standard when it comes to welcoming them. He said it in chapter 5 or chapter 15, verse 7. He said, Therefore, welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. Dai second lang po natin ng konte for the remaining minutes. Sabi doon, Christ welcomed you, you and me. God has welcomed us. The Bible says, even before we became part of the church. Yung us po na yun, yung you na yun, that's the us before we became part of the church. God welcomed us even before we understood the gospel. God welcomed us even we said sorry to Him for all the sins that we have committed. God welcomed us even before we invited Him or we welcomed Him in our life. Ganun po ka-welcoming si God. God welcomed us, the Bible says, while we were still sinners. That's the us. And that's the us that God welcomed in His life. And the Bible says, when we welcome other people, whether they are from the church or from outside the church, the Bible says this is the standard. As Christ has welcomed us. Ibig sabihin nun, katulad nung ginawa ni Jesus. How did He welcome us? By dying on the cross for us. By welcoming us lovingly, not for any hidden agenda. He welcomed us sacrificially. But it was, I'm sure it was not convenient for Him. Dying on the cross, for people not like Him, He is holy, we are not. We are sinners for his enemies even. It's not it's not fun. It's not it's not comfortable. It's painful even. And he welcomed us unconditionally. No ifs. He did not say, uh, I'll welcome you if lagi ka magsa Sunday service. You magta tight ka kahit pandemic. Or dapat ginagawa mo to. Magbabasa ka ng Bible cover to cover. Not unconditional. He welcomed us. And He welcomed us by dying on the cross. And God is saying, that is why you can do it. That's why you could have the confidence na kaya mo din gawin. But I'll say that it also convicts us na parang, God, kung ginawa mo nga yan to that extent, how can I not welcome a brother? How can I not welcome someone in church na magkaiba lang kami ng opinion on certain things? Or even, how can I not welcome someone outside from the church simply because in my mind, they are not worthy? Simply because in my mind, makasalanan sila. You see, God welcomed us. And God is commanding us, telling us, welcome other people as well as Christ has welcomed us. Four applications that I could think of to apply what we have learned today. One, we could worship God. Worship God, just appreciate Him. Live for Him because of the, the welcome that He gave us, the love that He gave to us. Another, we could welcome other Christians into our life. Sometimes we're so content already na, God, may relationship naman ako sa'yo. Tayong dalawa na to forever. But how about opening your life? to other Christians, to other people in the church. They're not perfect. They, you may have different opinions with them on certain things, but guess what? You are both in Christ. God called you to be together. Let's welcome them. Maybe for some of us, God is moving us to welcome other people to become part of His church. Not just Victory Metro East, but for them to have a relationship with God. Maybe there, God is moving you to, to invite your neighbor, your friends, your relatives, someone uh, in your village, welcome them so that they may encounter God. Or probably you are here and you're listening for the first time and what God is leading you to do is to welcome Him into your life because you know you don't have a relationship with Him yet. My prayer is that as God welcomed us, we would respond to Him accordingly. Let us pray. 
Lord, we thank you for indeed you are a God who welcomes us regardless of our beliefs, regardless of our backgrounds, regardless how different we are from, from other people. You're a God who welcomes us to you, to our relationship with you. And thank you, Father, for today we are reminded of that love. We are reminded of that acceptance. We are reminded of that uh, mindfulness that you have towards us. Lord, thank you for welcoming us. And in the same way that you have welcomed us, Father, I pray that we would be able to do the same to the people around us, to others, Lord. Thank you, God. I want to pray for for some of you in this uh, at this time. Maybe you are here, you are joining us in this video, in this broadcast, and you just know that God is pointing things in your heart, things that you need to repent of because you just pushed people away from the church or probably from their relationship with God simply because they had a different opinion on certain matters of their in their faith. Maybe that's you. Like God saying, my son, my daughter, would you be right with me in that area? Would you repent? Would you ask forgiveness? You know who you are. If that is you, would you bow your heads with me and pray this prayer? Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the times that I'm so legalistic, I'm so uh, pushy when it comes to the things that I believe, to the convictions that I have, to the point that I caused other people to stumble. I push them away from you. I even hinder them from coming to you. Lord, I'm very sorry. I repent for doing them. I declare, Father, that in the same way that you have welcomed me, I would now welcome them. I would now help them so that they may understand more and more about you. Lord, I receive your forgiveness and I receive the fresh uh, infilling so that I could fulfill what you have called me to do, to welcome people to your kingdom, to our relationship with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want to pray for another group of people. Maybe you are here and you're those people who have been pushed away from the church or probably from our relationship with God because of uh, differences in opinions and convictions. Maybe you are here and you're joining us. Kaya nga, maybe iba sa inyo, kaya kayo online na lang nanonood kasi you don't want relationships anymore. But God is saying, would you go back to that relationship? Would you go back to the church? Would you start by releasing forgiveness to those people who hurt you? If that is you, would you pray this prayer with me? We're going to pray and release forgiveness. Bow your heads, close your eyes. Lord, in behalf of those who, who, who are hurt right now because of the, the rejection that they have received from, from people from church, from people who have different opinions compared to them, Lord, thank you. For we know that you understand our pain, you understand our hurt. But today, Father, because you are calling us to be together in your church, Lord, we are choosing to release forgiveness to these people. Lord, they may have hurt us. They, have made, they may have caused pain to us. But today, we surrender them to you. And we declare that we are forgiving them. Can you mention their name? Lord, we are forgiving this person. We release them for doing those things to me. And today, I'm making a decision that once more, I would allow myself, I would open myself to new relationships in church, to a new relationship with you. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lastly, one more uh, group of people I want to pray for. Maybe you are here and what God is speaking to you is for you to welcome Him in your life. Would you make that decision? Would you accept Him in your life right now? If that is your decision, would you pray this prayer with me? Jesus, thank you for running after me. Thank you for uh, inviting me to have a relationship with you. Today, I welcome you in my life. I ask forgiveness for the sins that I have done. I ask for your new life to be upon me. And thank you, Father, for uh, right now, through Jesus Christ, I can receive, I can receive this new life, I can receive this fresh start, 
and I can live for you. So today, God, I welcome you in my life. I welcome you, dwell in my heart, and direct my life from this day on. You are my Lord, you are my Savior. In your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. If you are th those people that made that decision, I want you to know that you made the best decision in your entire life. And we want to help you grow more in your walk with God. So please help us connect to you. So scan you lang po yung QR code flash on your screen or probably contact us through the contact number. Or probably just sabihin mo lang, I accepted Jesus sa comment section. He would reach out to you and he would help you grow in your walk with God. Alright, so for the rest of us, can we do this? Can we just commit uh, this week, our lives to God, and just honor Him? Let me speak this blessing to you. Let me read to you uh, the book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 13, in the New Living Translation. The Bible says here, I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because, of, because you trust Him. Then you will overflow with confident hope. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray this scripture to everyone who joined us today. I claim, God, that throughout the week that you would experience your hope, your joy, your peace as we trust you. And thank you, God, that as the power of the Holy Spirit overflows in us, we would be ambassadors of your uh, goodness and blessing to other people. Thank you, God, for what you're going to do in us and through us. This we claim in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you everyone for joining us. See you again next week.